morning. Today I have the Chicago Electric benchtop router table. One and three-fourths horsepower router. It's got a half-inch collet. Item 95380. So let's dive right in. So here's the basic things in the box. We have the table with the router on-off switch, fence, and two boxes. Okay, this box had four legs and the safety cover for the bit. This box has a bunch of parts. So, what do we got? A wrench, two hold downs, a very, very small and cheap miter gauge. Second wrench, it's like a bushing adapter from a half to a quarter. Some inserts to approximate a zero clearance uh, insert. And a bunch of screws. And Harbor Freight continues to put the plastic number. This is PELD, so it's medium density polyethylene. So it's 04. With those numbers, you can recycle effectively. Wow, everything you need but a manual. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Well, it's probably the first time I've seen these come without a manual. And it's actually kind of weird because I cut the tape on the box to open the lid. So I'm not sure what happened. It's a somewhat nice top. The track, this doesn't fit very well. You can adjust this by bending these out in a uniform manner. Um, that has a slotted track in it. So, pretty obvious that these go here. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm gonna put these all underneath. That'll make it a little easier. I can insert the screw from the bottom. Drop on the washer and the nut. No way to get a good shot of this. Okay, while I've got this upside down, and we can look at this, we have the on off switch. Kind of gets in the way of putting it together, but that's the only time it'll do that. You have a a lock and lock lever. If you look at this, you can see that this is a custom mount to the table. So you can take the router off, but it won't work without this attachment. So you can take it off and use it, but it really isn't worth your while because of that attachment. Uh, an extra router isn't that much to go ahead and dedicate this to this and a new router to everything else. So this is press board, particle board, Maybe MDF. I don't think it is, but it's if not, it's close. There's nothing about this that if you had problems with this one, you couldn't make another one fairly easy. The only challenging thing would be the miter slot, and I don't think that would be that bad. Okay, I've got these plastic inserts. They're a force fit, which is good. They'll stay in there good. They're slightly below the level. They're slightly below the level of the table. They're not a consistent fit though. I can pop these out the top, but with this one, I'm kind of afraid if I pry right in the center, it's gonna break something. And they give you various, they give you various inserts. This is the smallest, this is the biggest, depending on what bit you're using. Oh, they give you two, a three eighths and a quarter cullets. Dust collection and the fence is going to go here. Of course, it's plastic, it's incredibly cheap, but it'll work. And you can also use it to pattern your own if you're into that. These are obviously to hold these down. Keep the washer on the top because the slot, this is a carriage bolt, so the slot's going to keep this from turning. So I put this in. Hang the fence, put your washer on, always shiny side up because they look better. I 
you know, that'll hold it while I put the second one in. Same thing. Put that in till it settles in the groove. Washer on, so shiny side up. Put your hole down in place. Okay, for the router table top, router table itself, we're good. We still have to set up this router. Okay, so it has this little bar. It has a little arrow on it. Goes in here. And there's a flat side that faces out for the screw to press against. And that's going to be your depth adjustment. Okay, so this side has a depth stop. This thing's going to be a little awkward to use. So it has some scales here. This side, zero goes what looks like the outside edge of the collet right here. This side looks like it goes zero to the center of the collet. We'll try that out in actual using it. If you're going to be using this, you better get used to feeling around down there for that release. It's behind the power, which makes it awkward to find to begin with. And you're never going to stand on your head to see it. Okay, I can't believe they're doing it this way, but this lifts on and off. And this is how they do it. So you take the washer and the screw off. Screw. Lock nut. Washer. Hold that up through there. Okay, so I took one side of the hold down off so I could swing it around. Put this screw in to hold it tight. This isn't how I'd normally use it. I'd normally route this cable around the back and put it behind the cabinet or something. But let's just see if it works. Well, while we're here, let's just do a test cut. Yeah, set that to barely engaged. I'm just going to round a corner off the edge of this. Actually, not this. So it's got a block of popper. And I'm going to turn it on. And that did okay. Exactly what it's supposed to do. Fine tuning the size of that's what's going to be a problem on this. Okay, I assembled the router table, showed you the parts. Uh, let's go over some details. Okay, there's not a lot of room here, and it's not going to get any better, so let's just uh, jump right in. There's a lever on this side, lets the router fall down. This is in the way all the time. I realize that you need the on off switch, but it's in the way all the time. Okay, so the router table's routed here with two screws through the top right here. Take those out. Take out the screw that's on the very edge of this leg. Take this, one of the screws you took out up here and put in place of the leg screw. Take this screw out to get the clearance to get close enough to this leg to reuse that hole. So line those up. And what you've done is you've changed where this is so that it's out of the way. You can see more of the router. Doesn't change how it works, just gets it out of the way. Now granted, there's only one screw holding it in. So the leg is held on just fine because this acts as the bottom nut. This on the other hand only has one screw right here holding it in. So it does, it could move, but if you get those screws tight, it shouldn't. So if you want to try that, try it. If you do this and it causes you a problem, go find you a mirror. Find the person responsible for you having a problem. If I push this all the way up, it's still not enough to make that router above the table unless I put some space between the collet nut and the router bit itself. The best arrangement but by putting those up a little bit they will work okay the fixed base router comes with a 24 inch also 
And if you look at that, they are different wrenches. One's as crappy as the other, but there are different wrenches. I thought maybe they'd be from the same manufacturer, but they're not. Okay, I've got it turned off, but I want to unplug it anytime I'm working around that router bit. Can't be too safe when it comes to that. Okay, the way this works is you put the 21 down here. You put the 24 here. And you loosen the cullet. Okay, take out that router bit. And if you can't pull that router bit out like it's locked, take the cullet nut off and take the cullet out with it. There are times when you put the router bit in the cullet that it will compress, it'll hold it in there, and it'll stay stuck. Use something to pry it off or to try to separate some of these. And once you get it off, it'll be fine. If you separate those too much, it'll break it. It'll crack it right up through one of these. It'll finish cracking all the way up through. So they give you three of these. So when you're using this, be sure you're using the right cullet insert. This is 3 8 To me, that's not a very common router bit, but maybe it is. Maybe I'm just not exposed to it. Quarter inch, which to me is the most common for the hobbyist. And this is the half inch. Half inch is better all around, but they're a lot more expensive, and that's why quarter inch is a lot more uh, common with the hobbyist. I went and got a half inch bit. This is the only half inch bit I have. It came with the two horsepower fixed base router, which I really like. But look at the difference. So the cutting bit is here on the half inch. The cutting bit is here on the quarter. And that's why it's not uh, got enough clearance. This table was built for half inch bits. Now I've got quarter inch bits, so I'm gonna have to make them work. Or go spend a lot of money buying half inch. So what I'm doing is I am raising this that much out of the collet. So that is not quite a half an inch, probably three eighths of an inch. That is not optimal, but it does work. So here is the half inch collet adapter. It just slides over. It's pretty uniform in terms of which way it goes. So you just slide that over. That collet adapter and the router bit slide down in, call it. Now, this is the nut, call it nut, and it will go over straight router bits, but it will not go over something like a roundover. So if you're gonna use a quarter inch like a roundover, and this obviously won't go through it, you put this on, you put the call it adapter on, and then you seat those in the cullet. Then you tighten that. You can tighten it by hand to save yourself a little time. Now, as you can see, that sits up a little. To get that to work, you actually have to pull that up that three eighths of an inch I talked about. And like I also said, that ain't the safest thing in the world, unless you get a good uh, clamping pressure on that. So I tighten that by hand, holding the motor just to make it easier on me. So now I'll just tighten this, and I don't want to over tighten it. If you over tighten it, not going to work right. You're not going to be able to get the collet off, and you're going to strip out your wrenches and the collet nut and the motor nut. So there we go. That's how easy that is to set up. Now remember, this is unplugged. That's how easy that is to set up. But let's take it back off. So you lock the motor, and then you pull on this. Uh, the motor slipped off. Everybody complains about how thin these are. Well, they almost have to be thin because of the size of that nut on the bottom. The 24 can be a lot thicker. Okay, I just pulled the router bit out. And that is a clue as to how you can do this. That was, the collet was a, the collet adapter was a little difficult. So you can actually stack these differently. So I'm going to be using the half inch. I can put the half inch collet adapter in the collet. I can then put the nut on, tighten it a little. I can then get my half inch bit, put it in, then I can start tightening it. And I always tighten it by hand as much as I can before I put the wrenches on. Just makes it easier on you. 
um, working with this two wrenches and a router bit, awkward enough without having to be there longer than you need to. So I just want to start tightening this. Don't want to over tighten. You over tighten, you're going to run your router. There you go. So while we're here, I'm going to raise this all the way. Pull this out of the way so you can see it come through. Raise it all the way. And as you can see, the bottom of that cutter on the router bit is right even with the table. So I get full, uh, so I can get full depth of cut. So this table was made for half inch router bits. So when we put a fourth in, this table's too thick. If it was half of the thickness, or actually if it was a fourth of the thickness, the quarter inch would have no problems. Try to remember that when you're working with Harbor Freight tools, they're not perfect and you pay less for that imperfection. Okay, so how do I set depth of cut on this thing? Well, the best thing I can recommend is to do it by hand. Put something up there that you can judge how thick it is, where a round over goes, how thick a depth of cut you want. And do it manually. This is not going to work. I'll give it to college try. I'll loosen the nut and I'll push it all the way up. Okay. That is full depth of cut, and if I want less, then I've got to adjust this further up. So I'll loosen this, and that is full depth of cut. So I'm going to take this cover off. I'll show you from the bottom, and then I'll show it from the top. So I loosened that till it was all the way down. I'm going to push it up until the cutting edge is even with the table, and I'm going to lock it. I'm going to loosen this nut and I'm going to push this bar all the way up. Okay, so I have that set to, well, it's set to about an eighth of an inch. And here's the problem. Say I want a half inch above there. I've got to count those tick marks, which are sixteenths of an inch, until I get to a half inch. So I want to do eight. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I love that so much. So push that all the way up and tighten it. So I've got to count an eighth of an inch. So if I want to come down a half inch, I've got to count eight of those tick marks. So I will loosen this, but hold my hand under it so it doesn't fall. And then I'll lower that eight tick marks. Okay. There is no way that that is accurate enough for me to use when setting depth of cut. But, so I went down eight tick marks, I loosen the router and I'll push it up. Theoretically, I now have a half inch above. I have no confidence that that's right. Because every time you loosen that, it just drops. It's an approximation. I highly recommend that you use something to measure up here. Use it as a relative measure. Set your router bit, start of cut, even with the table. Set that, and then you can use it to adjust the depth above the table after that. And it's all relative to where you start it, not an absolute number. So you can see why I wouldn't want to use it. So you always want to keep this on when you're using it. Okay, so three-eighths might be as long as half, I don't know, but quarter-inch seems to be a lot more popular. If you want to work on it, release that. I'm going to take the half inch bit out because I want to try the round over. The number of times that I'll use the half inch bit, not very often. I have quarter inch bits, I'm going to use them. Just for fun, use, let's use a rabbiting bit. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. I know I need to raise that, but let's get the cullet bit tight as we can get it. Okay, now pull that up about three-eighths of an inch. Put this on. Now you know why you need three hands to do this. Shouldn't be this difficult. 
Okay, I've got it tight enough that that's going to stay in place, so I don't have to hold, worry about holding the bit. So now I can use these wrenches. I don't want to over tighten that because I do want to be able to get that router bit out at some point. Okay, so using this shank as an example, if I have that much showing, I've got half of it in the collet and half of it above. So what is my depth of cut? I've got the entire depth of cut. I can make that whatever I want it to be. Okay, now feel underneath the router table. Well, you hold this up and that's why they give you that handle. And I'll show you. So you have this handle to put it up and down with. And feel around for this lever. Because normally you'd have it like this and you'd be feeling underneath trying to find it. Fumbling in the dark. So now we can take the tabletop and start adjusting it. Technically there is a bearing on there. So I don't absolutely have to set this perfect, but I actually do. I don't I want to get up against the fence and then go up against the bearing and pretty much have them in line. Okay, so I only use the markings on the table to make sure I'm flat across the front. I don't use those as any type of a measurement. Get used to not using them, because guess what? Those are printed on. Those are going to be gone really quick. But here you go. Now I've got my zero clearance in. It's not zero clearance, but it's as close as you're going to get with these uh, adapters. I've got this router bit above the table at a place I'm comfortable with. The cutter bits are lined up roughly. I'm just holding them in my hand so they're not perfect. And there's about a half inch, three eighths of an inch, probably three eighths of an inch difference in the length of the shank. And that's what leads to this problem. So theoretically, I could take off this router off of the table, mark it, and route half the thickness of this away and lessen the amount that I've got to stick above that. And I will definitely do that. I like the idea of routing away part of the table much better than having those stick up like that. But if you want full depth of cut, that's what you gotta do. Okay, I'm gonna keep this on. I personally don't like it. It's for relative adjustment. And in reality, all I really care about is depth of cut above the table. So I can adjust it so the depth of cut above the table is correct. That's all that matters. Okay, it says there's a plunge function. You can plunge cut with this router. So you would have to leave it loose and plunge it up. The only problem I have with that is when this isn't locked, this is loose. So how precise is that going to be? Always remember to hold that when you loosen it. We're just going to fall right out. So how accurate is that going to be? Can I... See? I, I just don't know that I would do a plunge cut with that. Play around with it, but typically if I'm doing some type of a cut with a router, I want it to be precise. I don't want it moving around like that. And this is one of the few tools that Harbor Freight supplies without extra bushings. That's kind of weird. And a reminder, you always want to leave this on when you're cutting. Okay, I didn't get close up with this, but to adjust the fence, you loosen these. And you think you'd only have to loosen them a little, but I have to take them a little further than I thought I would. And of course, this will move independent of each other. So what I do, Let's come around here, line it up this way. Okay, again, those catch. So I use the marks to line it up. And I would get these as tight as I could because I wouldn't want that fence to slip. And it also has this knob, which lets this slide out. So, like I said, more options is always better.
Doesn't mean you have to use them, but more is better. Okay, so I've given you enough knowledge that you can use the router, quarter inch bits, half inch bits, whatever. So I've got all these spare parts, and where am I going to keep these that I'm not going to lose them? Well, my son eats bagels with cream cheese, and Walmart has these square containers, and I keep them. So I had a couple of screws left over from where I remounted this. I want to keep them with this tool, because that's what they came off of. I've got two collet adapters, half and three-eighths. I have three, four, five zero clearance inserts. I got my zero clearance inserts in there. Don't have anything that I'm going to put these in. So what am I going to do with that? Every time I go to Harbor Freight and pick up a tool like this, I pick up one of these four-inch magnetic tool holders, and I knock the bag it off. There we go. I didn't put that cotter key back in, so let's put that cotter key back in. Don't want to lose that. So I've got this, and I can do two things with this. I can mount it, stick the wrenches on it. I can peel off that plastic and it'll stick just a tiny bit better. But there's my two wrenches. But I don't like them there. Don't want them showing in the front. I'll mount them behind there. So now my two wrenches will stay. This uh, actually is, if you go buy these magnets, they're actually expensive, three or four dollars each, because they're rare earth magnets. Very strong. So I'm betting that no matter how often you use this router table, those will not move at all. And I've got all of my parts. I'll put that on the shelf. Nice and convenient. I'll throw that away. So the free stuff at Harbor Freight comes in handy. The miter gauge is loose. If you expect any accuracy out of that, you're going to be disappointed. So use it to push stuff through, save your hands. I know you have push sticks for your table saw. Here are the ones that I use. This one's cut to be thinner. Uh, these are the ones that I use. These look just like the ones Matthias uses, but I got these out of a book years and years and years ago. And just cut them out of uh, poplar. Plywood is a better option. And use this to push stuff through. Never get your hands close to a bleed. Doesn't come with push sticks, but Harbor Freight sells them if you don't feel like making them. If you want to make them, that's good. If you want to make them, use plywood. Okay, so... We put it together, we tried it out, we showed how to put quarter inch collets in it. I gave you the real solution to the router bit shank length problem. Take a router and route away half of this. Some, sometime in the future I'll post a video about routing out the bottom of this table to make it give it full depth of cut on the router bits without actually sticking the router bit out for, as far as I have to. So if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.